Thank you for joining us for our Midweek Connections, where we are interviewing members of our community, who, starting with those who live far away or who are newer to us. And so today we are really excited that we have with us Ed Groves and Matt Barth coming to us all the way from uh, the Washington, D.C. area. So great to see you guys, and thank you for being with us today. Oh, it's a Hi. pleasure. All right. Well, we want to just give you a chance, um, starting out, to just tell us a little bit about yourselves. Well, my name is Matt. Um, I work here in Washington, D.C. Um, at our veterinary hospital. Um, I'm not a vet. Um, and um, we moved here about 11 years ago. Um, we were originally in Indianapolis and um, were um, members, I guess we still are, um, of Central. Um, and from about, what, 2004 or 2005 um, until we moved. Um, and um, so actually we were we were we've been members of central from afar longer than we were members of central from a near <laughs> <laughs> okay all right yes you've kept your connection since you've since you've left all right ed can you tell us a little bit about yourself sure so um again like matt said we've lived in the dc area for about 10 years uh i'm actually what i like to call fun employed right now i've uh, Fun employed? Is that what that was? Fun employed. I, Fun employed. I coined that phrase. That's great. Okay, great. Uh, gives it a little more positive spin. Uh, but my career has been in higher education and uh, in particular on the uh, advancement side or the development. So helping to raise resources for higher ed. Can you tell us how long you two have been together? it'll be um 27 years in march and we we have the distinction of having been married by um, pastor linda um on new year's eve um 2015 2016. yes we just we just did an interview with someone who was married i believe the day prior to you uh -huh. yes yeah well, and we had our rehearsal dinners in the same place at the same time. Or no, that our rehearsal was during their reception at the Rats. Yes, Hall. yes. So you said that you, um, you, you came to Central when you lived here and then you moved away. If you can, if you can remember back that far, um, what, <laughs> what was it that um, drew you to Central originally and what is it that makes you want to stay connected? Well, you know, we were uh, looking for a church home uh, and just sort of looking around. And I don't know if folks will remember back, you know, that long ago, but uh, it wasn't as common to find congregations that were open and affirming and welcoming to gay families. And what we learned through the search was there was kind of code right? Like you could tell when a congregation was really open and you would find lots of language about open and affirming, et cetera, et cetera. So obviously Central was, you know, completely committed to that, that diversity uh, well before the, the rest of the world was catching up. And so we came to visit and kind of fell in love. I had a terrific meeting with you, Linda, where I asked about the church and the culture. And it was, uh, it was very funny because I was asking all about, you know, Central has many multi-generational families, which is one of the things that I really love about it. But at the same time, when we were coming in as a gay couple, we didn't want to basically feel like we were kind of taking over somebody's church. And I remember talking to you about that and you kind of put my, you know, my concerns aside, but sort of left it there. And then if it wasn't the next Sunday, it was the Sunday after, there was an invitation to your and Bev's wedding in, in the, the program. 
And I was like dancing around the whole open and affirming thing, talking to you. <laughs> and it was all perfect. Oh, nice, nice. And then what's your experience now? I mean, how you've sort of been able to reconnect um, during, right. during the pandemic since we started live streaming. Um, what is it that, that's kept you connected? That was really important because in moving to DC, we have, it's been 10 years and we were, we weren't finding a church home, certainly not one that resonated for us the way Central does. And when COVID happened, it was, it was for, as for everyone, devastating. And um, when we found out that there was a, a, an online option that would have us connected to a place that was so important um, and is so important, it was like a lifeline. And, and it made those times bearable and connected. It was like no time had passed. Yeah. And that was precious. And it really did make something that was kind of scary um, manageable. And I, for myself, I had to go to work every day during the pandemic. I left the house and I went to work. I didn't work from home. And I lived in a pretty heightened sense of fear. And Sundays were a chance for me to be reconnected and to see faces that I miss and that, that people were, I don't know, all going through the same thing together, but like even at a distance, you know, we were able to, to be together. Yeah. Yeah, it really has been one of the blessings of the pandemic is to be able to reconnect with people like yourselves who um, we just, it was, it was kind of few and far between for a while. But also not to, not to overly flatter you since you're doing the, the interview, but I can also say that your, your preaching and the lessons you took away from scripture, well, and if people come to visit, they'll find that that's always true. Um, and you get to the very core of it. Um, and so that gift was even more, uh, more meaningful through this. We, I can tell you, um, easy 50% of services, I cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is my goal. <laughs> as well as should be no well thank you i, I appreciate hearing that and uh, from both of you just what what it's meant to you um, during this time of being physically separated so uh, the last question we're asking is a, a, on a little lighter well it might be lighter it, it depends what your answer is but um is if you could um set up for church you know get this get the screen on and everything and then bring along somebody with you who's a fictional character who what fictional character would you like to bring to central um atticus finch and it occurred to me because atticus would fit right in at central that kind of peaceful kind wise uh you know and i won't i won't give anybody a big head to to uh allude to any of the, the members of the congregation that might conjure that for me, but you, there are several. Yeah, Atticus Finch from To Kill a Mockingbird. To Kill right. a Mockingbird. Yes. Nice, yeah. Matt, do you have one? I do. I, I, had, I had chosen somebody um, from one of my favorite books, but then I, I actually thought as I was sitting here of what I think is the perfect person, and that is, um, Eloise, oh. who lives at the Plaza <laughs> Hotel, um, she's impish and she's a child, and and I I think she would sparkle and um, and appreciate friendship so, or, or or central. central. Yeah. All right. Oh, well, thank you. Those are those are uh, great great people to imagine um, with us. 
And we just want to thank you for your time, uh, for devoting this time to sharing a little bit about yourselves and, and helping people who don't know you already uh, to get to know you a little bit. So thank you for joining us and we look forward to introducing another member of the congregation next week. <laughs>